You see, it's just as I told you. While you toiled away trying to find your dear friend, he quite simply replaced you with some new companions. Evidently, now he values them far more than he does you. You're better off without that wretched boy. Now think no more of him and come with me. I'll help you find what you're searching for. The Mines of Kingdom Hearts. Is Soriku real? If you've been a longtime listener of my channel, you might have seen a few of my Soriku videos. Soriku was very important to me when I was young. Through fan fiction and theories online, it helped me understand who I was. But over the years, as I grew up, I began to accept that Disney will never let Soriku be a thing. At a certain point, it faded away, and I no longer believed that Sora and Riku had any hint of romantic feelings at all. Then, when Kingdom Hearts 3 came out, instead of enjoying it, I was heartbroken. I enjoyed the game, and I thought that it closed the stories very well, but it felt like Soriku was finally put to bed. So, I made a video. So Riku, 10 years later. And it got a lot more views and engagement than I thought. It made this channel what it is today. A place where I express how I truly feel. The comments and emails I got changed my mind. And I believe that Soriku is not only possible, but probable. I made three videos about Soriku, and I moved on. But people kept saying they want more. I wasn't going to do it. I thought that I'd made my point and there was nothing more to talk about. But I found something. I bought the Kingdom Hearts novel collection. I've decided to read it, take a fuck ton of notes, and answer a bunch of questions. What are the characters actually thinking? What is the actual plot of Kingdom Hearts? Is the story actually good or is it convoluted? Is Soriku actually going to blow up in the next few games like a lot of us suspect? Or is the game just a basic ass Sora and Kairi relationship? This book is so big, and I hate reading so much, that <laughs> this is going to be a very long series. But I'm going to go through each book once a month. All 13 books. This is going to take me a year. <laughs> so today, I'm going to explain the plot and storytelling, the differences and actual canon thoughts of the characters, and whether or not there really is gay subtext or not. I'm trying to be objective, and I'm trying to truly understand the series as a whole. So let's jump in to Kingdom Hearts 1. Ready? Go! <laughs> Introduction. Because I hate reading, this book, even though only having 11 chapters with a few sections in between, took me two months to read. I got it on December 25th, and it's now February 23rd. It has been 60 days since I started reading this. And I finally finished taking notes on everything. Reading some chapters multiple times and falling asleep a lot. But I have a complete account of what I read and how I felt. Now, this video would suck if I just read that. So, I'm going to summarize the plot of Kingdom Hearts 1. Kingdom Hearts 1. The plot. A metric fuck ton of shit happens in this game. So much shit, even with extensive notes, I can't talk about everything that happens. The story is immense, and the book does a good job of breaking it into 11 pieces with short fragments in between them. But this story is complicated. So to simplify, to those who don't remember, Kingdom Hearts 1 is about three friends. Sora, Riku, and Kairi. The basic details of their lives have been misinterpreted by people for years. And the book does a great way of explaining how their lives actually work. They all live on a massive island together. But for fun, they take boats to a small island nearby called Destiny Islands. 
They all have parents that live back on the bigger island. Sora and Riku go to school, and a few years ago, a girl named Kairi showed up with her grandmother. It's revealed later that a man named Ansem sent them there to see what would happen as a result of Kairi living there. Kairi instantly grew attached to Sora and Riku. The three were inseparable, but Riku wanted more. Knowing that there are other worlds out there, because of Kairi, Riku began to think of the island like a prison. Riku realized that he wanted to explore and see what was out there for himself, and he wanted to leave. So his friends helped him make a raft, the High Wind. There is a small cave on the island where the kids snuck off to. Sora and Kairi drew pictures of each other all over the walls, and Riku and Sora used to hang out there before she arrived. There is a door at the back of the cave. This unassuming door is actually the heart of the world. Now, this may already seem confusing to someone who doesn't pay attention to the lore, but a long time ago, darkness covered the universe and destroyed it. All that was left were isolated pockets of space called worlds, floating in a cosmic soup called the Ocean Between. Every world has a keyhole that, if unlocked, will allow monsters to completely destroy and devour it. The door is Destiny Island's keyhole. A creepy man in a robe tells Sora that one day he will open the door to light, and he disappears. Meanwhile, a guy named Ansem tells Riku he can see the universe if he gives in to the darkness and opens the door. So Riku opens the door. As a result, the whole world is destroyed. Everything they call home is gone. Riku asks Sora to come with him, but Sora refuses. So Sora becomes our hero. He needs to find his friends and use this magic weapon called the Keyblade to lock all these keyholes on each and every world so the bad guys won't destroy each of these worlds. All this lore is told to us by Final Fantasy characters in a town for refugees that survived their worlds being destroyed. Sora travels with Donald and Goofy to find his friends and save the universe. Each world they go to is a different level, and in this book, a different chapter. Sora learns a different lesson in each world as he travels. He even says them directly in a paragraph on page 96 near the end of the book. Ahem. <clears throat> I will now quote it. Peter Pan showed me that if I believe, I can fly. Aladdin showed me that I've got to keep my promises no matter how hard it is. And Tarzan showed me that I'm with friends I can really believe in. Everyone taught me so much. Our hearts are all connected. He also learns what it means to be a hero from Hercules, the corruption of court systems in Wonderland, and slowly watches as Riku turns evil. Throughout the story, Sora gets stronger, and his goal remains the same. Find Riku and Kairi. He bickers and fights with Donald Duck, and gets advice from Goofy. Riku, on the other hand, is the real main character. While Sora moves from world to world, fighting monsters with a smile of forced positivity, Riku is manipulated and lied to. Maleficent, the mistress of evil, is helping Riku travel across the cosmos, teaching him how to be strong. Riku runs into Sora almost immediately after their home is destroyed, and he is shown by Maleficent that Sora has replaced him, that he's off having fun while Riku is trying to save Kairi. Riku finds Kairi first, and she's in a coma. Much like Sleeping Beauty and Snow White, she's unconscious. But Kingdom Hearts didn't simply use poison or some curse. No. Kairi's heart, her very soul, left her body at the start of the story, and her spirit has been with Sora this whole time. Riku has been trying to wake her, but it won't work. So he is forced to go to the dark side, gaining more and more power, closer and closer to the darkness. It gets so bad, he's willing to kill Pinocchio in order to find a way to save her. The entire time, Sora is heartbroken. Riku is trying to save Kairi at any cost, and Sora believes the ends don't justify the means. Eventually, 
Riku is waiting for Sora. At the end of the story, Sora must travel to Hollow Bastion and fight to save all the Disney princesses who have been captured by the bad guys. Riku steals the Keyblade and takes Donald and Goofy away. Sora is left all alone. He has no one. He has nothing to fight with. Just a wooden toy sword. But this is how Sora feels in that moment. On page 81, near the bottom, what do I do? What am I supposed to do now? I don't have the Keyblade anymore. I don't know what to do. Donald and Goofy went with Riku. I thought they were my friends. Sora is about to cry, but he gets up and follows Beast. I'm not going to give up now. I came here to find someone very important to me. As if in response, the Beast walks toward the castle. Sora fights his way through the castle, and a few pages later, Donald and Goofy change sides. They side with Sora, and they beat Riku. And he thinks to himself, What happened? Why? Gasping for breath as he ran, Riku only had questions. Is Sora really stronger than me? Or is it something else? We were rivals, and I always won. Even if I lost, it would just be dumb luck. Except when it was about that. About Kyrie. Maybe I'm really no match for him after all. He is then interrupted by a man in a robe, and he is told that only a heart that is strong and true shall win the Keyblade. The Keyblade chooses, and for an instant, Sora was stronger. The man tells Riku that he already walked into the door to darkness, and if he pushes through, he will be more powerful than Sora, if he lets his heart become all-encompassing darkness. He turns to the dark side, and Xehanort, Ansem, the Seeker of Darkness, the big bad of the series, takes over his body. Riku can't accept the fact that he can't do everything on his own. He's jealous and angry and hurt that Sora betrayed him, that he can't save Kairi on his own. So he gives in. Sora still beats him, but he learns the truth. Kairi has been with him all along, and the only way to save everyone, to beat Ansem, to save Riku, to save the universe, is if Sora gets Kairi out of his heart. He then stabs himself with the Dark Keyblade, and Kairi wakes up. Sora dies in her arms, and he is lost to darkness. But, only one page later, Kairi brings him back. He's human again. And this lesson that Sora has always known is echoed at the end of the story. After Riku holds Ansem back, they all get away and they regroup. Kairi and Sora have a nice moment where they talk about this story her grandmother told her. That light will always be in the darkness. Sora fights his way to Ansem through a bunch of cool-ass darkness and shit. And he almost dies for good. As he almost dies, while surrounded by darkness, Sora hears one voice. On page 98, column 2. Just as he was nearly taken over by the darkness of despair, someone spoke to him. Giving up already? Come on, Sora. I thought you were stronger than that. It was Riku's voice ringing inside of him. Giving up? No way. Not me. Sora breaks out of the black cloud, and he saves his friends Donald and Goofy. And together, they fight Ansem. Ansem is this big, strong anime bad guy, and they have this big, epic boss fight. And at the end of their fight, Ansem says that everything is born in darkness, and so shall it end. But Sora tells him that he's wrong. Kingdom Hearts is light, and Ansem dies. In the end, the reason Sora won wasn't being stronger, wasn't fighting harder. Sora won because of empathy, because of the connection he had with his friends. Ansem was all alone. Maleficent was all alone, and they had no one. And they tried to teach Riku to do the same, to shun others and to only rely on yourself. But Riku knew better, and the theme of the First Kingdom Hearts couldn't be explained better than by Sora himself. When he's fighting Maleficent, in the book he says, even if she has more magic, she's not stronger. Because real power 
comes from caring about other people. And later, he says his famous line, My friends are my power. While searching for evidence whether or not Soriku is a thing, I found something better. I found the true message of the first game. Human connection is all that matters. No matter how hard it gets, no matter how many bad things happen to you, no matter how tired and broken you are, you have met people who matter to you, and you matter to them. Even if you're worlds apart, even if you never see each other again, you will always be connected. The story of Kingdom Hearts 1 ends with Riku and Mickey Mouse trapped in a world of pure darkness, and Sora, Donald, and Goofy are separated from their loved ones. Sora watches as Kairi is taken away. Kairi returns to the place that they said they would always be together, the cave, and she cries. They are all separated, this trio, these three childhood friends, isolated and alone. And that's the happy ending. The universe is fixed, the worlds are saved, but these three friends are broken, separated. Riku's last words are, Take care of her, Sora, Kairi, this girl that inspired Riku to leave, to explore the worlds beyond. All the three of them want is to run on the beach together, but all three of them are left alone. Kairi, stuck in her island prison of mediocrity, Riku, trapped in a never-ending darkness with a corporate mascot that destroys copyright law on a regular basis, and Sora, being forced to put on a happy face and fight until he can have a better life. Kingdom Hearts 1 is an amazing story, but it's only the start, and I'm so excited for the next book, seeing Riku confront his darkness, Sora lose his memories, and a robot clone question his own identity. This series is bonkers, and I love every second of it. Anyway, I'll see you in a month with Chain of Memories. I'm Maloney the Bard. Thanks for listening. Bye. Woo! It's done! <laughs> this video took way too long. I hope I can finish the next book faster. It's only 20 chapters. Uh... 166 pages of five-point font. This book has smaller font than most Bibles. I feel like I'm a gay cleric, hunting for the gay Holy Grail. This first book isn't so much about Soriku as it is about setting up the themes and concepts of the characters, but I hope in the next few books I'll find some good thoughts that they've been hiding from us. I will say, based on the things Sora thinks in this book, he's definitely sadder than people think. He's not one-dimensional, he's a real person. And I really hope the later games are going to touch on that forced positivity and self-hatred that Sora has beneath the surface. Because I can definitely see it. Anyway, I'll be back next week with a regular video. I would love to do all these videos at once, but this is going to take me a year to finish. So once a month seems probable. I hope forcing myself to read is worth it, because my brain hates reading. It's like pulling my teeth out of my skull. I hate sitting still, but I do this because I want to know. I want to know if I was right. I want to know if you were right. I want to know what the truth is. Were we all reading into things or is there something there? I wanted to talk more about Soriku in this video, but I felt like it was more important to talk about the overall series and how the story actually flows and feels. Hopefully in the next few, we'll start to see that romance grow. Otherwise, it might not be real, but there are still 12 more books to go, so see you later. Uh, check out my stream. Mm, look at all these dates all around me, all these times. Huh? Maybe? If enough people watch, maybe I'll play all of Kingdom Hearts at some point. I'd love to have like a full chat of people who, who are either for or against Soriku working together while we play through a whole game and trying to figure out whether or not this is all real. But uh, that's probably like a year from now if I keep this up. Anyway, this is a weird video. Um, I was going to stop making Kingdom Hearts videos a while back. But I didn't think there was anything more I could add. But now that I've gotten the book and no one else is reading it, I hope that I find something.
I've already learned a lot about Kingdom Hearts in general from this. There's so many little subtle things in my notes that I've picked up. Anyway, thanks for listening. Bye.